It's The Real News Network. I'm Greg Bulpert. With global temperatures on the rise, climate change is affecting every aspect of our daily lives. Food production is especially sensitive to climate change. Several new studies highlight this issue. One such study shows how climate change will make rice less nutritious. Another study shows how climate change will affect the geography of fisheries and thereby spark fishing wars between countries. And a third study by Michel Tichiliar uh, shows how a warming world will disrupt global food production. Her article, Climate Change Could Heighten the Risk of Global Food Production Shocks, examines how climate change will contribute to lower, more vo volatile, or failed crop yields. We're now joined from Seattle by Michelle Tichiliar. Uh, she is the author of the aforementioned study and a research associate at the University of Washington, where she studies the effects of climate change on global food security. Thanks for joining us today, Michelle. Thank you, happy to be here. So your study examines how climate change will affect different parts of the world uh, in terms of food production. Currently, the Paris Climate Agreement aims at keeping the global temperature rise to less than two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Give us a brief summary of what you uh, find uh, such a temperature increase of, let's say, two degrees Celsius would mean for global pro uh, food production. Yeah, um, so in our study, we did look at um, what a two degree warmer world would mean for food production. And we also looked at what a four degree warmer world would look like for food production. And we see um, that in both of those worlds, uh, crop yields would be uh, significantly lower. Uh, as, and also that it really matters if we do two or four degrees warming, um, just underscoring how important the Paris Agreement is. And in our study, we specifically looked at corn, which is currently the most grown crop in the world. And we found that with a two degree warming, um, global corn yields decline between 10 and 20 percent, and also yields become more volatile. So this means that the risk of uh, having crop failures um, becomes larger in a two degree warmer world. So, um, and of course, you're looking at the global situation, but you also look at different regions. Uh, and do you see a cor correlation between the richer and the poorer areas of the world and how uh, the adverse effects of climate change uh, affect their food production? That is, in northern countries, which are, tend to be wealthier, uh, could they actually benefit from hotter summers and winters, whereas the southern uh, regions uh, would have uh, suffer more from climate change in terms of food security? Yeah, so actually in the case of corn, what is really interesting is that just four countries, the United States, China, Brazil, and Argentina, actually produce more than two thirds of the world's corn. So the production is highly concentrated in just a few locations. And we were expecting that, especially for the United States, since it's currently not as warm, maybe the effects wouldn't be as bad. But we find that um, for the U.S. in particular, um, for the U.S. and China and, and those other countries, um, we actually get relatively similar um, effects of warming on crop yields, which is really bad news um, for those countries themselves, but also for um, the poorer countries in which um, many people, uh, especially urban consumers, are really dependent on the prices of food in international food markets. Um, so even if they don't live in the United States, they are affected by crop losses in, in the United States. Give us uh, just some of your key um, numbers. That I, I saw that to, you know, in, in the summary of your research, you mentioned some concrete percentages as to how big an effect a two degree increase would have on the reduction or volatility of uh, food production in those crops and how much a four degree increase would do. Just give us a couple of those highlights. Yeah, so one interesting statistics that, that we looked at is what is the probability that four countries at the same time, the four main um, exporting countries, would have um, crop failures larger than 10% at the same time. And this is really relevant because of uh, that effect of then prices in the international food markets. And we found that this probability of those four countries at the same time having such a big crop loss is essentially zero because um, weather is relatively independent between US and China. So, um, so the chances of that happening at the same time is low. But in a two degree warmer world, uh, that probability increases to 7%. And then in a four degree warmer world, that probability increases to 86%. 
So, so you make also a very important point that uh, corn production, for example, is not just expected to decline with, in rising temperatures, but that production volatility is supposed to rise as well. Uh, and um, I'm wondering if uh, globalization and faster shipping and instant communication might perhaps mitigate that uh, volatility in food, food production. Um, so uh, first of all, why do you expect volatility to increase? And second, why is it uh, dangerous that this volatility increases and could perhaps uh, changes in, in distribution uh, mitigate that effect? Sure, so uh, in terms of your first question, why why do we expect volatility to, to increase? Um, sort of conceptually, you think of, can think of it as there's this optimum temperature at which a crop can grow, and beyond that optimum temperature, um, yields rapidly decline. So if you uh, go beyond the optimum temperature, if you have year-to-year -year variability in temperatures, you, you are going to be increasing the variability of those yields. And why this matters is because, um, uh, because of the fact that, first of all, it, it matters to individual farmers and the consistency of their income, uh, especially in places where there is no crop insurance. Um, but it also matters for international grain markets, um, and, and corn is heavily traded and is a product that is used for many different end, um, end, so, end uses, such as um, animal uh, feed and um, also as a biofuel. So therefore, the price of corn is tightly related to the price of other commodities in the market. Um, in terms of your question about can we mitigate this in terms of more efficient shipping or communication, um, we've actually seen um, prices of uh, crops and volatility of food prices uh, increase over the last couple of decades as markets have become more tightly connected. And um, what is especially interesting here is that um, the actual response of countries to initial price shocks in response to, say, a yield drop um, is really important in determining what the overall um, prices will be in the international market. So in the 2006 to 2008 food crisis, um, there was actually only a rel relatively small um, reduction in crop yield, but the food price change was enormous because all these countries ended up closing off their markets um, for trade. Finally, uh, what other effects might climate change have a, on global food security? In the introduction, I also mentioned two other studies, one that shows how fisheries will be negatively affected by warming oceans, and one that uh, talks about how uh, the nutritional quality of rice crops will be diminished. W what other effects do we know about? Well, there, there are probably many different effects. Um, there's, there have been a number of studies that have looked at crop yields for uh, the main staple crops, but also um, you know, if you want to think about um, fruits and flowering, th there is a whole seasonality there that um, might be affected. Um, some interesting areas of research that I'm currently contributing to include looking at how crop pests will respond um, to warming. We know that ectotherms uh, thrive in a warmer environment, so um, the the pressure of pests on crops is expected to increase. Uh, and um, I think it would also be really important to look at the effects of warming on agricultural workers. Uh, I was just reading an article on how drought in Honduras had um, taken away the livelihood to farmers there and then leading to um, large migration to towards the United States. Okay, we're gonna leave it there for now. I'm speaking to Michelle Tichler, a research associate at the University of Washington. Thanks, Michelle, for having joined us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. And thank you for joining the Real News Network. Also, if you like stories such as this one, I want to remind you that we recently started our summer fundraiser and need your help to reach our goal of raising $200,000. Every dollar that you donate will be matched. Unlike practically all other news outlets, we do not accept support from governments or corporations. Please do what you can today.